Thank you. Hi. Do I start or you start? We wait. We wait. Because the music starts. We listen a bit to music. Sounds like a thunderstorm. with music because uh, our talk is also about Mozart and uh, my name is Andreas, uh, we've been introduced before, Christopher, and um, in, in Vienna on the Kärntner Straße you find this amazing experience called Mythos Mozart. Christopher, you tell a bit more about it. Hi, yes. So since we started with music, I'm very happy to welcome also our head of music, Walter Wertzauber, who is a very experienced AI guy. So if you have time, uh, don't miss out to talk to him. Uh, he just uh, launched also a huge AI driven musical project, the Beethoven 10. 10th Symphony Project. So, uh, Mythos Mortis is about Mozart. And uh, as you might know, Mozart was Austrian. I mean, not in fact Austrians from Salzburg, which was not part of Austria at that time, but still we incorporate him. Um, so he was Austrian. And uh, in fact, he had his last apartment of 13 apartments in the 11 years that he spent in, in Vienna, in the Raunsteingasse, right downtown Vienna, where now we have a department store. And the owner of that department store decided at a, at a certain point in his life, when his 80th birthday approached, to do something about Mozart. And happily enough, uh, he found me. <laughs> and so we together, on his uh, command and his commission, uh, created this uh, immersive, digital, uh, interactive, uh, experience with the help of many artistic partners, one of which is uh, artistic and technical partners, one of which is is uh, Andreas, and he will uh, now go ahead a little bit. I mean, what what uh, just to, to, to since I am on that picture, uh, I'll say a word to that. The first experience that our public has is people arrive and uh, do at a tiny, small, little photo station and a picture a photo, a 2D photo of themselves. And we attach the metadata of their ticket to that photograph. And then in the background, Andreas's technology, Junge Römer technology, transforms that 2D photograph into a 3D uh, rig, 3D avatar, and we paint it in the style of the 18th century. And then people can, can take, retrieve this image then at the exit in the gift shop, exit through the gift shop, of course, uh, and can take it home, can print it out and take it home or send, have it sent by, by email. Andreas. Yes, and uh, this email, uh, this email or printout is actually an analog outcome which you can hold in your hands. That's the very last piece of a very intense technological uh, background, and uh, we've been using a lot of AI in that. So, AI and immersive experiences is what the thing is about, and I want to share. We want to share some insights about this project. So, um, you know, reality. What is our reality? Uh, Philosophers uh, say that uh, what differentiates us as humans from animals is mainly our capability to tell stories. Because this is what holds us together. This is uh, what uh, our values are shaped of, our culture, history and vision. Um, and uh, this is also what storytelling in our Mozart project is about. Yuval Noah Harari, who is an important historian, he is well known in the IT scene because of his book uh, um, yeah, about AI. Uh, and uh, this year, when things around AI really got hot, I'd say, uh, he said, what would it mean for humans to live in a world where a large percentage of stories, melodies, images, laws, policies and tools are actually shaped by non-human intelligence? So what happens when our stories are now being told by machines? And uh, Harari, of course, describes a possible future, but we are on the way to 
a possible future. And so it's time to, to think about how, how to use AI, how to work with it. And we, as a studio, we use uh, AI in different uh, uh, aspects of the uh, production. And uh, now I just want to take a focus on our joint project. Um, yeah, of course, we use it in the layout phase. Uh, we use motion capture, real-time asset generation coding. And the layout phase, is, I think, uh, is well known because what we do is just image prompting and we use it for mock-ups uh, and other things. This is what we do, but we hardly use it for production. So to really prompt an image and sell it, uh, did actually hardly happen until now. Um, yeah, and here we have a friendly... We are here in the anteroom of the a little bit Mozart sound. experience, where we have built this wonderful gallery together with Junge Roma. In Petersburg hanging, there are so, 24 magnificent... That's already quite some AI uh, uh, background here. It's not me talking. By our audience coming through the I, I said that in, English, in German, and uh, Andreas and his team translated it into English and made also me talk uh, lip sync in English. Uh, we, we have that also in Hindi, which is very, very nice for our guests from India. Um, so we, can, I, we have this introduction in every possible language. So what you see here is people already enjoying that gallery. And what you see is that the avatars that we create also start to interact. So it's a huge gallery of 26 uh, uh, paintings. And the paintings interact uh, with each other, which is great fun for, for, for our visitors. Just to mention that, it's funny for me to talk to you here because um, Andreas talked about philosophy. I'm a trained philosopher and I have a 35 years background in music management. So it's really cool to see you here and to talk to this bunch of people, which is great. And I'm very happy and it's fun to be here. Yeah, thank you, Christopher. Always with you especially. So. Um, Animation with motion capturing, that's one major uh, technology we used here. Uh, it's, it's not uh, rocket science, of course, but it is very effective and efficient uh, science, I'd say. So what we see here is, um, a second, is our, uh, actually our director, creative director, who is uh, enacting. So first thing, we didn't need an actor for that. This was just the director doing itself, the motion capture uh, setup. Then we uh, have the technology that's called uh, Move AI. There are many out there, but we've been working with this uh, system because it proved to work really well. And uh, then we have six GoPros in a certain setup. It sounds very easy to reach the best possible outcomes. It's not, but uh, yeah, but um, it, it works very, very well. And so we had a, a possibility to create really vast amounts of motion capturing content for, um, for this uh, experience uh, by quite low cost and being very independent of expensive motion capturing studios or such things. So I uh, remember this uh, seating position because here we see another uh, version of it later. So that, that was for us, of course, as, uh, as, peop as the people that, that commissioned the, the work, it was of course a huge, a huge step that, that I, I saw happening. So when we started to work on another space in that, in that uh, experience, we had motion capturing, we used motion capturing tool for some avatars walking through Vienna in Mozart's time. And that was done with a, in a motion capture studio. And then uh, half a year later, or three, not even half a year later, Andreas invited me to their studio where they did the same motion capturing with at least the same result, so a quality of result, with more or less nothing. So with a few, with a few iPhones, uh, as you've seen in the in the in the setup. GoPros. So GoPro, sorry. So what we see is uh, now Andreas's uh, image, and then a first iteration of the 3D rendering, and then a second iteration, and then we see what we are doing in the experience. Yeah, I uh, wanted to add that uh, the tool set we used for creating the avatars is called Avatar SDK. Uh, it's a paid service and it works really reliable. Um, this is a 
choice we made uh, one and a half or two years ago. Now we have other systems and I can at this point recommend to you the system that is just out there, just left of the food court. There is a little station by Avaran or something, I don't know the name, sorry. But uh, their system is really good and if I would go for another run with this uh, idea, I would uh, cho choose their system, yes. Um, okay, let's uh, make this video run. Here you see an outcome of uh, this uh, thing in uh, various formats because we have, of course, uh, every different kinds of people can go there, so we have to prepare. We have to prepare for Asian, for black people, for, for girls, boys and uh, everything else. So we have different kind of uh, clothing and but the animation itself is always the same and the face uh, system is also the same. Uh, yeah, here we have another more uh, advanced image that's telling a bit more of a story, also with uh, the face of uh, one of the visitors being shown on, on the uh, chaise long. Um, in this um, animation, uh, we have various people that are appearing in one image, and uh, actually, the boy that's coming now, it's the motion capture outcome that we've seen uh, before the recording, uh, the recording session we've seen before. Um, yes, and uh, to get all these things aligned, it's a lot of technology. Uh, actually, behind the uh, scenes, we have uh, uh, three or four large uh, PC machines with loads of expensive graphic cards, and Unity is actually the engine behind it, and we use a lot of coding to make this happen. And uh, does this uh, does, yeah. does not run? Uh, mm. Okay, it, it was supposed to show an animation here, but it doesn't matter. What I wanted to say is that we used to um, uh, really work a lot now with G GitHub Coding Companion. This is a system for developers that uh, just enables their productivity to be doubled. Our CTO says he is now double as effective and I notice he is at least one and a half times more happy because he uh, really feels like he in his tunnel, like we say for developers, he has now a friend assisting him. And uh, this is really a great thing. So we used it all the way. I can really recommend to, to uh, yeah, get teams into using uh, GitHub Coding Companion. So, uh, what we do now at this place of development, we do design isolated elements with AI, and the next step will be that we design stories. And this, uh, if, uh, when we come to designing stories, then it's more my part in the, in the game. Um, we uh, due also to a close friendship of Walter uh, with Refik Anadol, we started to work with him. You might have seen uh, artwork by Refik already. He does those, uh, this type of artwork all over the world. Just now he launched a new one in the MoMA in New York or in Barcelona at the Casa Batlio by Gaudi. So he's, he's always, his principle is always taking lots and lots of data um, in fact, all data available on a theme where it's working on, like here it's Mozart, so much of the data is of course public domain about Mozart, but we also licensed a lot of data that we gave him and asked him to uh, let his very specific AI-driven algorithms run on those data and create new uh, visual worlds. For me, it was very important, and, uh, and I hope when you come to visit us, you'll see that, um, that uh, our, our visitors, our guests can feel this process. So they can see the data that we start with, and they can see the algorithm running on it, and they can see uh, like this kind of uh, very abstract visual words created from that data so that you have this immediate experience of uh, witnessing what the AI does. So that's, that's a very important uh, aspect for us. I, I didn't use uh, AI for storytelling so far, uh, but maybe I should. I mean, uh, working with Andreas gives me, gives me envy a little bit uh, when he says that uh, his people are one and a half times as happy and double as, uh, as efficient. I could use some of that too, I think. Yeah, um, everybody does, I think. And uh, this is what we should also talk about. How can we as developers, as producers or 
as industry people uh, uh, implement uh, AI to, to yeah, use these powers with, um, without being uh, afraid of it or so. So the step one is the operative layer, which we've been talking about now. Um, just use tools. The second one is the experience layer, uh, like uh, Rafik Avnatol's work uh, is already implementing. Then the next and last layer will be strategy. Of course, we can get some strategic uh, consultancy from ChatGPT uh, now, but actually to roll out uh, executing strategy, that's not what we do now at this time with AI. Um, this image shows a, a little map of uh, uh, pro prognosed, pro prognosed <laughs> developments from 2020. And as far as we are here by 2023, everything that uh, was uh, pronounced uh, yes, uh, really proved to work out. So when we take this serious, in 2020, 30, we will have text, code, images, video, 3D gaming, anything completely production ready produced by AI. Let's see if this happens. But what does this mean for us? Where will, will, be, uh, where will be our jobs? Where will be our families? What, does our, what do our kids learn now? So I want to uh, bring this uh, study by Goldman Sachs, which says uh, employees can follow on higher value tasks and those displaced by AI may eventually find new job opportunities. Eventually, yes, but uh, the study also found that 60% of current workers hold positions uh, that did not exist in 1940. And this implies that over 85% of employment growth in the past 80 years is attributable to technology-driven creation of new roles. So we all have to think about settling, looking for new roles uh, together with AI. And what can we do as individuals, as companies to prepare for that? We should all acquire AI tools, uh, implement them into our workflows, take some time for that, uh, prioritize it a bit more. Uh, we do, everybody should do some training in their own tools and everybody should learn to understand the potential of AI tools and uh, accordingly to uh, their own personal values. That's the most important thing. If you want to use a tool, you have to sync it to your personal values and that's my personal suggestion for you. And, and to finish, uh, we want to, to show you a little very nice video. Uh, we, I've, I've met Stefan Sagmeister, the quite famous uh, uh, graphic designer who's working in New York. And he held a very nice talk. Um, and what, what, his, what his message is, and I really want to share that with you, is open up the perspective a little bit. Open it up to 20, 50, or 100 years, and you will see now is better. And if you remember what people said about the train, about the car, about uh, uh, the energy, like also atomic energy, or about poverty, or about uh, uh, child, uh, the, the birth death rate, or whatever, all those numbers have changed for the better. So the world is now better than it has been a hundred years ago. And uh, this despite the fact that every single technology that came along was warned off. So always people said, oh no, don't touch it. We don't have to use it. It's, it's dangerous. And so now we hear this talk about AI. And of course, we need regulation. Of course, we need consciousness. Of course, we have to be careful with applying it as with every other technology before, but uh, now let's go out, let's go out to the exhibition, let's go out to the other talks, let's go out uh, into the world in our jobs and take care that this now is better holds also for tomorrow, so that also tomorrow will be better than today. And just one, uh, one uh, remark, this, all this has been, uh, is, is just video, no AI in the, in the pictures, it's filmed at Stefan's studio. So thank you very much for your attention and uh, we are here also for some questions if you want. Yeah, I also... Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Just very quickly, uh, if you're interested in our work, like, have a look at Junge Römer.net. And also we run, if you are Vienna-based, each Friday um, once a month. For example, next Friday we run a meetup that's called uh, Generative AI for Creative Industries. And it's really self-empowering. Uh, uh, community that is uh, everybody's helping each other and it's great fun always so join in drop by would uh, be happy to see you Bye.
thank you. Yeah, very inspiring last words also. And uh, one thing I would like to mention is the um, paintings that you showed in the video, the animated paintings, reminded me of the Harry Potter moving paintings. Uh, was that your inspiration or where did it come from? I, as, far, as far as I remember my creative director inventing this thing, uh, he first had the idea to do this and then somebody in the team said, hey, that's like Harry Potter. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what okay. uh, I can't say it exactly. Yeah, but it's a good uh, interactive, immersive idea. I like it. Very much. Thank you so much. Do we have time for a question? Oh, yeah. Or? Anybody has more questions? Okay. Hi. Um, I was also wondering about these digital portraits and also about the fact it, that you showed that, this, that there are quite different uh, models available and presented. Did you, is, do I, as a visitor, have some influence of the outcome? And if so, you as a project team, what was your discussion to, to the freedom of the outcome that the visitor can choose? Yeah, there's of course been a lot of discussion around it, but the major issue was to choose a system that we uh, facilitate, because as we now work for, uh, with uh, Avatar SDK, the faces, they are just produced by the system, and we can hardly do a lot about it. We can shift some values and so, but not a lot. And uh, yeah, that's basically what we depend on. And everything else has been just designed to join one certain look, one certain way of 3D design and one certain of quality level, because you can always go this or this direction. We just took this way because uh, uh, according to budget and time needs, we, yeah, it was the best way to do so. Sorry, okay. uh, we ran out of time, but uh, stay tuned. There's another talk coming up. 50, 50 seconds. Well, I got instructions. I'm so sorry. One, this one, okay. of course. We take there you. You, go. you. You get the, the mic. Uh, the question not directly related to the talk, but uh, about the meetups. The meetups you mentioned, is, uh, do they also happen online or? It's just Not yet, but starting from December, we will open to an international online-based community. You will be welcome. Just look at us for us at the Meetup application or on LinkedIn, and uh, I'm happy to have you. Okay, cool. Thanks. Very nice. So that's the good end. <laughs> Thank you.